Okay, so practicing the the answer using the high level advanced concept. Just developing nice and steadily. Pretty safe opening by both of us at the minute. I feel like I'm doing almost a copycat situation, but it feels comfortable, doesn't feel out of sorts. The opponent is playing white, so they're the ones who are actually up in the tempo, but I believe they're losing tempo by playing in this way. So it's too safe for them at this moment in time so we are just going to cross through the center here what's the target points what are the weak points now that we've both castled the opponent can say the same thing that I'm about to say now this area is weak it's only supported by the king this pawn is weak-ish because it's supported by the knight and it's supported by the king but the knight is weakly again supported by the bishop so in essence it's not a strong defense we've got the same sort of position so we're weak in those areas that we've just mentioned so it's trying to maintain a strength position through attack rather than defending So our opponent now, I believe, is a movement behind. They're a tempo behind in terms of developing attack. So bringing the rook through now, developing, as you can see now, now they're having to follow our lead based on that smallest of loss in tempos. So we have the option of attacking here, defending the pawn here, opening up the white square bishop. Can move the knight out can bring the bishop out towards the king area not really settled as yet need to really get this white square bishop into the game do have the knight that can go there but this pawn is protected by the rook could do that so there's many options i prefer opening up the center just so that we can see the wood for the trees And the reason why we've got rooks is so they can try and operate on an open file if possible. He might not take, he may just decide to leave it there. He could push this pawn down, that type of scenario. Oh, he's just asked why am I very slow? I don't think I'm very slow. <laughs> I have to wear Forty-five minutes, it's a fifteen second game. I can take as long as I want. Can't I? <laughs> it's a simple question. <laughs> it's a very strange question again from my opponent so they've pushed here and like we say we could take this pawn just take it off the board no messing i think what they're wanting to do with that question is make you then start moving fast because they're quite they're quite fearful with this opening that they've done here it's not showing confidence in their ability so they've put something in the chat here why are you very slow so that then in your brain you think oh i better start moving fast i better start making mistakes 
so that's the psychology behind chess you know and the chat that goes on online <laughs> man why are you so salty i'm just kidding with you <laughs> lol, lol me too <laughs> I must be going on a crazy one, but hey, what can you do? <laughs> so it takes, and we can just capture here. So let's fingers crossed the strategy doesn't work, you know, that can get you involved in the chat. And then you psychologically, it does, it works. I've seen it work on people, you know, listening to them in the chats and then they're talking away and they're not concentrating on the game and then they make a blunder they make an error and they wonder why they've made the error but it's because the person in the chat is getting them riled up and they don't actually realize it so learning how to fight back in the chat as best possible or not get involved in the chat altogether it's entirely up to yourselves So psychology of psychology of the game over the board games there's psychologies that go that go on like crazy and if you're not used to those psychologies then they can also take you out so now they've gone for a deep think it looks like and the rook takes and as we know rooks don't have any place in the center of the board they lose tempo they have no um, they have no benefit unless you're going for a, a really good sacrifice with the rook in the center of the board then yeah go for it but if it's not going for a, a really good sacrifice that's really forcing a good position on the board I wouldn't waste my time because you don't get that time back and this opponent now is like two tempo behind now Let's put the rook there because we've got a two on one on the pawn with the bishop so he's supporting it with his rook on this side here so we do have options we don't need to rush anything and we can go here with our bishop attacking his rook that might be small potatoes though so yeah, easily defended he just moves the rook out of the way Oh, we could bring the rook across, we could develop the knight, maybe, but no, not yet, not yet. Maybe push a pawn, push a pawn. You know, I think bringing the bishop here looks okay, it's attacking a higher piece. If he moves, we maybe could potentially can take the bishop off the board. And then we've got the two on one here, but I think his knight will probably come and defend coming this way. So it's not too bad, but we do like to try and obliterate the centre and try and gain some sort of um, advantage. Seems to be working okay for us at the moment. Like we say, Rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board. He's now probably about three tempo behind, three moves behind. So we'll just grab the bishop here. Okay, so like we say, we've got the two on one here, but he may do something fancy if his queen takes then if the bishop takes then his rook can come here facing off our queen so that might not be a good situation so we might not be taking unless of course we take with the queen and then we can move the queen around yeah so he does take with the queen and if we take with our queen take with the queen his rook comes across if we take with the bishop his rook comes across we do have pawn supporting which is also attacking the knight but then his knight moves so his knight moves here or it could move back here could move back there there bishops on the pawn his rooks on the pawn push this pawn to support could push this pawn down to attack take that pawn okay all right let's take with the bishop so 
we think he's coming across here so we can push here onto the knight don't really know where the knight's going to go <coughs> could come around here or something could even come there because the queen's protecting so we're three moves up anyway so we've got to try and take advantage of those three moves up and it's being able to spot that you're actually tempo up or moves up that can put pressure onto the opponent so hopefully we've got some type of advantage psychologically that's how I'm thinking of the game others may go well no you're actually losing but for me I've got to have a belief in the moves that I'm doing and we do have plenty of time to actually make whoa big queen move Queen has come all the way to attack the king here. <coughs> He's looking for his knight coming here, then isn't he to attack this pawn? Yeah, so if we did push here, if his knight drops there, then we're checkmated. Mm -hmm. I think we probably bring this here don't we to come here if he comes down we need to protect the king we're not thinking of anything fancy let's just protect the king that's a key bishop's got no protection now so we need to be mindful of that as well he's got a two on one here with his rook his bishop's eyeing up our knight so there's things going for for them at the moment as well it's usually safer to try and block off any of their attempts which also helps to improve your position on the board as well so if you have a look through the knight is the pawn and it does come down with the knight anyway so I'm just going to bring the queen here so it's gone for a quick and dirty tactic type thing and as we know when people go for these quick and dirty tactic type things from the opening that the opponent had made it it wasn't it wasn't a strong opening in terms of saying this is who i am this is where i am um they waited for us to sort of not explode out but to get a good position on the board we, we're three moves ahead of them and now they've chosen to actually do their quick and dirty tactic and the key thing from quick and dirty tactics is they then don't have a good position on the board 95% I'd say even 99% of the time when people do those types of things against myself they never end up in a good position once that dirty tactic has failed then they're scrabbling around trying to get their other pieces working together so I think this is where the opponent is going to potentially fall short and we hope to take advantage of that so it's just my thought processes like I say somebody else looking at this may say well you're losing we're going to capture no messing about there but just want to show yep yeah, so obviously he's attacking the bishop that makes sense but working their pieces together just bring the rook here now this is pinning the bishop to the rook but because we've got our rook here at the moment we're okay but if he decides to bring his knight here he's got a two on one here so we're gonna have to push this pawn to block that off so that's okay so are his pieces working together realistically not at this moment in time so now we're about five moves ahead because he did the quick and dirty tactic move with the queen with the knight so that added two on to the three moves that we were already ahead it sounds technical but it isn't technical it's um, just looking at what is actually happening on the board it's like doing a dance yep if you're working together nicely with your partner nice steps here there everywhere coordinated then it works lovely but if your opponent if your partner decides to do five steps instead of three steps then they're out of tune so everything goes out of kilter 
that's what this opponent has done here they've allowed me to get them out of kilter so he's come with a big pawn move now again it's you know it's a pawn move not looking to bring his pieces working together that is the key thing so how do we want to work this could move the knight because the bishop's looking to chomp up chomp on it could push the pawn onto the king onto the knight um doubling the pawns i don't really have a problem with that could bring the rook here protecting the knight but then it's protecting two pieces so that's not going to be clever so in essence we're going to have double pawns So we can work with double pawns i'm just eyeing up the position just making sure that we're going to be okay but i think just simply pushing this pawn onto the knight works quite nicely a smaller piece attacking a higher piece so we're still up five tempo ten, five important crucial moves he may decide to push his pawn down onto our knight thinking he's winning a tempo or he may just take the knight with the bishop here doubling the pawns but he's actually moved the knight he's actually moved the knight into the pathway of our bishop our bishop can take now he's got an issue so he's given us six moves up now from that particular move maybe he was probably better just bringing it back here or bringing it back there that's what i'm thinking that i'm i'm not saying it's right or wrong or whatever just uh looking at it so that i can then get an advantage in the game this is how i'm working so we take maybe he decides to take our rook first then we take back then he can take with the rook or the bishop so he'd probably take with the bishop to stay on the knight Hmm. If we attack the rook, his rook comes down, still attacks. We take. Where is his knight looking to go? Troublesome knight. Here attacking the pawn. Ooh. There attacking the pawn. I'm taking the knight. I don't think I want any trouble from the knight. We've got, we're up five, is it five moves at the minute? So I don't really want to lose any more time now. And simply just reduce down now, because we can. Plus one at the moment. So we can afford to reduce down. Could challenge the knight, the rook because then if the rook does take we take here and the knight is protecting the pawn here if the bishop takes we take the rook off the board so to gain the smallest tiniest of advantages we're plus one at the moment And usually that's all that it takes you know being plus one and then being able to then manage the movements going forward into the end game it's the art of chess and we've explained how we've got to this position to get the smallest of advantages the rooks disappeared he doesn't want to play any of that so now we're is it seven moves up i've lost count we're about seven moves up now tempo wise and you might think oh well you're only a pawn up it's nothing major but we're playing the game of chess and we want to try and get an advantage and we're, we're trying to improve our game and we're trying to see whether or not we can actually better our position on the board could push on to the bishop 
no point moving the knight because he's just going to take the pawn could bring the rook up and attack his uh, pawn here bishop takes, pawn takes he moves down, we're still owning this file at the minute get the king across into the centre a little bit maybe block off his rook it's all long, long winded movements but it's ok let's bring the rook here, let's attack this pawn we've always said we don't mind doubling this pawn up then make some inroads here maybe yeah all basic chess we do like the rooks owning the open files as best possible but if we do get the opportunity and if we can take maybe once the king gets to here he'll be looking to mobilize his bishop somehow actually he's not done any of that so it looks like he's losing out on tempo now because we're going to have an active knight that can start bouncing around all over the place so bring the knight down as we said protecting this pawn here rook's owning this file it's on a nice square because it's a dark square so the bishop can't attack it then we can start moving the pawn or blocking whichever way with the pawn here can't go there because the bishop's protecting so we're fairly comfortable there at the minute potential of attacking pawns here but for now we'll stay here so we'll see what the opponent's going to do so they're slowly creeping up to my time now 40 minutes I'm on 38 there's <laughs> not much chat going on <laughs> Ah oh dear, when the reality kicks in on a game, especially after the quick and dirty tactic thing hasn't worked, it does make me laugh. So, oh, it's pawn pushing. It's pawn pushing now. We can basically attack this pawn. This bishop can come in front here, but then we can attack the bishop. So then he loses the pawn. I think he's the type of player to try that sort of funky business. Or does he just go all the way back again? Feeling that that's a safe haven for them, which it isn't. So I've got to be willing to play the longer games. This is why I'm excited to be in this position, because this is playing the longer game and quite a high percentage of players um, really don't like these types of end games and they would obviously they would offer a draw some at some point during this this period where plus one i'm feeling fairly comfortable with the position oh, what did i say he's the type of player to do that type of thing but what did we say we were going to do all we need to do is push this pawn and he has to move so he loses the pawn anyway So it must be down about 10 moves now, 10 tempo, 10 smallest of tempi, yeah. But those have mounted up now because his pieces haven't been working together right from the start. The opening was very safe. It showed that they knew what the pieces did, you know how to place them, but they were being placed in places that really didn't benefit or give them any advantage. And then the oh he's gone for a sacrifice of some sort i think he's given up now he's probably going to resign let's just capture here yeah there'll be a series of quick moves and then resignation so he would have only been down two pawns he could have brought his bishop back and played on series of quick moves and then done so we just go here with the knight attacking the pawn here or we can always bring the knight back just got to be careful because I don't want to make a boo boo uh, yeah let's go here and attack the pawn
it feels really good because i feel in a relaxed state in this type of position now because i've been practicing and trading and practicing these types of endings and if the advantage is not on my side in this type of ending i know i potentially need to sort of like maybe resign <laughs> you can still go because the opponent can uh, make a mistake so i probably would carry on and see whether or not they did make a mistake but it's going to be quite hard for the opponent i think to actually gain 12 moves back now really it's not it's i don't think it's possible so either way if he takes we take with the pawn here we can push our pawn up if we did take we're protecting this pawn here so if he did take our knight could take that back so we may as well just take this pawn so i think this one is um kind of done now i'll just capture with the knight here Oh, well he's willing that's fine he's, he's going he's still carrying on so that means he's believing we can make a mistake we do have a check but it's not really a major thing yeah, we could do it to take a pawn off <laughs> right so he believes in something he's behind this pawn not sure if the knight comes here and then sits here although he'll push it once if I go there these types of endings I focus on the main pieces that I've got on the board and sometimes I forget what the pawns can do if we push this push this down maybe captures captures his rook comes across just push this pawn because we don't want to, to got any, get any passes really do we now it's protected just capture this it's still going on I said a series of fast moves is going to take place and then resignation but he's not resigning he's not resigning what does he know still feeling comfortable rook can put a check but where am i going knight can still put the check but then it's too close to the rook could go for the pawn with the knight and it looks like they've left the game oh. Okay, well, um, looks like they have left the game. I don't know where the resign button is. Um, it's right there, so I'm not too sure. Again, it's one of those. I'll give him 10 seconds and then I'll claim the victory because he may have had a problem with the connection. Doubt it very much, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I've actually put, oh, what happened to your connection in the chat? Obviously, they're not going to come back okay claim victory right have a quick look at the analysis on that okay so let's have a look see if their opening was um, <coughs> beneficial to them after all so we did a bit of copycat in here nice and steady oh what's them questions on there have i got some annotations on Oh, move annotations let's turn it off there we go so we castled so it's pretty drawish and 
slightest of advantages like we mentioned because they're well in our eye, in my eyes they were like a move behind at this stage let me push forward in the center captured all pretty drawish there and rooks don't have any place in the center of the board I think the computer's agreeing with me on this one so we have the two on one there and again putting pressure onto the rook capturing so computers on our side but doesn't like that bishop move <laughs> doesn't like the bishop capture what would it say if I did the queen capture Ooh, didn't like the queen one well, so the bishop one was better but it didn't like that anyway okay oh and then the quick and dirty tactics thing comes in because the opponent doesn't have any pieces working together it's like the bed hasn't been sorted yet but yet they've gone out hunting you know so it's uh so I'll bring the queen here in expectation of the knight coming down which is pretty straightforward and we're showing an advantage here on the board on the engine rook comes through we defend pawn drops down okay so we're showing advantage it's not looking too bad we explained all of the process going through here so it's a pretty simple game pretty straightforward yeah and that was funny because you can sort of get to understand the A type of player um, you can, I, I don't get it right all the time you know quite a lot of the times players don't do what I expect them to do so um, it's quite pleasing when you see somebody doing a move that you thought they potentially would do but it didn't give them the advantage and we were feeling fairly comfortable in this type of position because we've been practicing these types of end games and it's the rhythm of the pawns looking to reduce and yeah so that was a fairly decent game advanced answer to chess using it to basically beat any potential answer threats that are coming my way so it's not something I've created this is from watching many many games of um, chess from all sorts of standards levels so for me to get an understanding as to how to um, get advantages against players who are you know, that come out with this quick and dirty tactic type thing you, you know they're, they're all over your king area and they're only all over your king areas because I've allowed them to do that and I've not paid attention to what they've, they've been doing now I'm paying attention to what they potentially can do I'm more times now able to block off those attempts and also find better positions on the board to then start putting my own advanced answer to chess in removing pieces from the board strategically so that they capitulate resign leave the game or put pressure on the king area to get a checkmate 